to learn more about you so we can better understand if we even want to do business with you. It's changing the, changing the whole tenor of the conversation. Because if they feel like you're walking in there begging for their business, they're going to beat the shit out of you the whole entire time. I mean, that's typical. So to your, to your point, getting in there and talking about what it is that you're going to do, and even if there's going to be a fit, start off with, hey, it sounds like you guys have a need, and we can definitely help you. But let's have some let's ask some questions and find out if we're a fit. Yeah. And by the way, this is how it's going to go. Always set expectations. How many times? I know you know this because I've heard you talk about it. You go into an appointment. You guys hug each other. Everything's great. You leave the appointment. Nothing. The ghost town. Crickets. Right. The crickets gone. What happened? There was no expectation set. Sure, the guy loved you in the ten minutes you were there. But after that, he went into an office and someone said. Those guys out there good. Or we, we have someone else, or I have a cousin, or whatever it is, that's what happens. So set expectations. I set expectations from the minute I get it in the first 10 minutes of the call. If, or if I'm in person, whatever. The calls are the easiest, because I usually say, hey Tim, I know you're a busy guy, you got lots to do. I understand your world. If I told you in 10 minutes I could find out whether or not I can help your business and make some solutions, would you take that 10 minutes? Boom, they say yes. Here's the problem with a lot of people, they go past the 10 minutes. Stop at 10 minutes. Yeah. It changes the game. You guys know this. If someone did this to you, if Jill called you up and said, hey Tim, I need 10 minutes of your time, I wanna to talk to you about this, and you say, sure. And at 10 minute mark, she goes, Tim, hold on a second. I really respect your time, and I told you 10 minutes. So if you wanna continue this conversation, great, but I wanna just make sure it's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Shit, if a vendor did that, you'd probably mm -hmm. fall off your chair, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same with our customers from an MSP perspective. You respect their time, and you're telling them so, so tell them that up front, set the expectation. And then, hey Tim, now that we're talking about this, we're gonna have a discussion. I'm gonna ask a lot of questions about you, you can ask questions about me, and then we're gonna decide if it's a fit. Mm -hmm. And once we decide it's a fit, here's our next step. Mm -hmm. That changes the game as opposed to, and believe me, I know, I was just like every one of you guys, at one point you guys probably all did this. Like you're so excited, you can't wait to tell them how great you are, you can't wait to tell them about all the tech. But nine times out of ten, when you get excited and start talking tech, you basically sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Yep. Yep. It's basically yeah, womp, 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 money. Womp, 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 money. <laughs> right? That's all they hear. So if you can come in and set the expectation of, this is what we're going to do, this is our next step, this is our next step, and they agree to that, people don't argue with their own data. Yeah. And the idea here is, we're not talking about sales, but we're still using sales tactics. Because we still have to help get people out of their own way to the point of the doctor, to the point of the lawyer, to the point of all these people have gotten to know the devil they know is better than the devil they don't. And all they know about the IT field is we're used car salesmen. And it's a horrible place to be in and we're trying to shift that. But for all of you, if you're trying to do this, think about how to do these things. A quick call thing, at the end of every one of my calls, because you know they have the walls up through that whole entire conversation, I'll be like, Tim, Hey man, it's a great conversation. It sounds like you got, you know, everything's in place and you're being taken care of by your MSP and that's awesome. That's all we care about. We just want to make sure everybody's taken care of. So now that the call is over, you picking up on that? Mm -hmm. Once the call's over, the walls go down. Mm -hmm. So make sure you say that. <laughs> now that the call's over, do you mind if I ask you a quick marketing question? Sure. And then you're like, so Tim, you know, you said these guys are great, but if there was one thing, just one thing those guys could do better, what would it be? I shit you not. 80 to 90% of the time, they said the same thing. Well, you know what? They do show up late. They're late. Oh, yep. good Lord. By the way, roll out your psychiatrist chair and <laughs> ask them 70 questions after that. No lie. I pull out the chair and I'm like, oh my God, how does that make you feel? <laughs> they tell me that. Now I start to hear the crackle. And I'm like, how does it make your team feel? And they, get, they start rolling. And it's like, well, how does it affect your business? Right? You can go on and on. I had a 92% close rate on that end line, and they usually said, you know what, Ken, you should probably come in. Mm -hmm. Simple little things that you could do to get them out of their own way, because look, at the end of the day, none of you have to feel like jerks for trying to do this, because you're actually selling something good. You're doing good. Yeah. We're not trying to push, like I said, a used car off on them that's gonna fall apart when they drive it off the lawn. We're trying to save their lives and their livelihood. So. From a standpoint of talking about this, can't stress this enough. Some you know, salespeople get pissed at me. <clears throat> I'm sure our sales you know, manager will be pissed at me, but <clears throat> it's true. If we can find ways to relate with them and then get them to say the things we want to say, because like I said, they don't argue with their own data, 
If you can talk to them in a manner that gets them telling you, like the end of that conversation, the shit that's really bothering them, now you're in their world. And really understand them, because basically, there's a funny, there's a funny correlation here. <clears throat> Think about this. When you guys have vendors deal with you, a lot of times it sucks, right? The vendors don't know how to talk to us. They, they try to push us towards a sale. They're, you know, it, it's not great. So think about that. Do you realize that you guys are doing the same thing to your clients when you're talking to them in certain cases? Right? So there has to be, there has to be a swing where we as MSPs understand that our relationships with the vendors need to be better and we need to talk to them better and get and understand it's 50-50. The vendors don't need to drop everything they're doing and drop their pants to do everything for us. It's not right. We have to go 50-50 with the vendors. We should be a part of their pack. We should help them grow and get better. And the ones that don't do that when you help them, that's when you look at other vendors. But that's the change that we're trying to make in the industry as a whole. Wes and Alex, those guys do a great job. Finn does a great job. Connor does. These people in the room that are here are all really great advocates in the space for just making it a better place. So for you all in the room, well, I'll say this too. Find me on LinkedIn. I don't do this. I, I don't get paid to do this stuff for you guys. I love doing it. So if you ever want to call me and say, Ken, man, I got this really weird one. Cool. I love that shit. I love helping MSPs get better. And I have thousands of friends that are MSPs, not just not because of me, but because of the fact that it's genuine. We have an actual real, I care about what you guys do. It's important. What we do is important. And you got to think about that. And think about that in your approach when you're talking to these customers. And they don't all deserve your help. They don't deserve it. Some of them don't, and that's okay. Those are the ones that are gonna get popped somewhere else. They're not gonna get popped on your watch. Separate from that, now, more than back in the 90s and the 2000s, the liability's on us, always, as MSPs. There's so much more liability now. You can't sign a document saying, hey, I told them to do it, and they didn't do it. That document doesn't hold up. I don't know if you all know that. The old data document that says, oh, I, I told them they needed a backup, but they signed this, doesn't hold up in court, doesn't matter if you're taking care of their systems, you're liable. So there's no more waivers that are gonna save you in that aspect too. So that's why it's even more important to find clients that value what you do as MSPs. Do you have a question? I didn't know if you have, no. just standing up. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Stretching um, Does anybody have any questions? Seriously, ask me anything. I mean, if I can answer it, I will. If I can, I'll be honest with you until I can't. That thing that you talked about originally, is that the oral contract from Sandler, the Sandler sales method? Which, oh yeah, 100%, very good, I'm glad you picked up on that. Yeah. Sandler sales, phenomenal, it's like anything else. It's phenomenal, but you have to have the right coach. Right. Because there are good ones and bad ones just like anything else. I've had people say to me, it was awful, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And I just happened to be in Boston where, believe it or not, every coach in Sandler was a Saturday Night Live SNL character, I shit you not. <laughs> My coach was Bill Murray. My, my, my salespeople's coach was Mike Myers. Really? No joke, it was the strangest thing, but they were all really good. And then I got out there and found some groups that weren't so great and understood why people said that. But Sandler Sales is excellent. And I actually helped write a bunch of articles for uh, Sandler, and I, I'd, I'd, I'd share them with any of you guys want them. They're just one page, white, white pages that just basically get you in a mindset of thinking in that direction, thinking like we don't have to take everybody on. Don't always go for the sale. And I'll even go for the no, right? Because it's the second best answer in the world because maybe kills us, right? That's that wishy-washy, well, let me think about it. No, no, go for the no. I'll take the no over maybe any day of the week, and I know you know that. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I started off with the Sandler stuff. Between, it's funny you say that, between Traction and Sandler, that's where I took my business from, I don't know, we were at six or $700,000, and then we went to $3 million, and then we went to $5 million, and I sold it $7 million. And the funny part about it was, and it's all different, every piece of that's different. The one million mark, I don't know those of you who are in that range or broke past the one million mark, that was a bitch for me. One million dollars, I shit you not, I was at $990,000 and I was gonna buy something for $10,000 just to say I hit a million. Just to say you did. I was losing my mind. My, 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 yeah, of course my accountant, my accountant basically said, dude, you can't do that, yeah. that's, that's not right. I'm like, but it's so hard, I was having such a hard time getting past that last 10 grand to get that one million a year just so I could say I'm a million dollar company. And then of course, I got past that and that one million looked great. My profits were looking like this. So year two, I just went basically willy-nilly and went crazy. 
and I went from one million to two million and my profits went like this. Yep. So I went like this, right? Because I wasn't, I didn't have traction in place, I had no processes, I was just, hey, I hit a million, man, I can yeah. do it all now. That's all, all you cared about was sales. That's right, <laughs> that's right. So once I got focused after that two million range and, and got past that piece is where things just really got strong and I got focused and I started to realize the things that I was good at, the things I, weren't, I wasn't good at, and it's hard. As owners, it's hard, man. It's hard breaking away from that, but when you do it, it's this, it's like a switch that clicks, like holy shit, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I get this, you know, make this happen sooner? Now, you guys have a little bit bigger struggle than I did because I feel like talent is so much harder to find now. Yeah, right. I know. I, I hear you. Um, and I don't know. What I did back then I still think would work now. It's just a little bit different. I started grooming people early. Yeah. And someone talked about schools. Someone had a relationship with a school or, or something, something like that. Empath does training. Yo, I know they, yeah, they do okay. training, but I'm talking about in school, there, there's, a, so, I have a friend who's an MSP, he got, a, he started out getting himself into the local college, because you guys know the programs suck for cybersecurity and tech, they're yeah. just not, they're not great. Um, so basically what he did is he went into the college and said, look, I'll write your curriculum for you and I'll help you build a program yeah. free. That's good. Smart friggin' move. Yeah. So he built the program. Now every student that comes through that is learning the right way right. and will come out of college with that better better prepared to launch and they're gonna go to him first. Yeah. Yep. Right? He had so then ones, yeah. he had a better idea. He went to the high school. And now we started to do high schools. If you have schools in your area that you can get into, back in the day it was ITT Tech. We all know that for those guys. Yeah. Um, I sat on the board for ITT Tech. I pulled more crazy people out of ITT Tech. They weren't. You know, they, these are people that sometimes went back to school, right? So they weren't all young. Yeah. Um, I pulled more people out of that program. Second to that, I know I only have a couple minutes left. Um, Apple Store, Genius Bar. When I was at Pax 8, we stole so many people from Genius Bar, they, they kicked us out. We're not allowed in. We're not allowed. <laughs> in Denver, we're not allowed to go to the Genius Bar. We at least got 12 people from the Genius Bar. They have your bar. picture. If you see this guy. Yeah, yeah. See this guy coming in, don't go near this guy. <laughs> um, yeah. Best Buy. Best Buy, go in there and talk to them about computers and make the guy explain to you. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter how knowledgeable they are and all the stuff that we do, but here's the thing. They're in retail and they're getting their asses kicked every day. Yeah. If face-to-face -face they can deal with that crap, Give them a chance, give them a shot, take them in, and you can train all this other stuff, mm -hmm. right? And even if they're, they might even be a little techie, especially if they're at the Apple Genius Bar or Best Buy, but I shit you not, on my way out, I know I got a minute, whatever it is. I was at McDonald's, driving through the drive-thru, and this kid got onto the thing, and you know how crappy they usually are? Hey sir, how's your day today? I'm looking forward to taking your order. I'm like, what the shit? <laughs> <laughs> that just happened, I'm like, I don't even know what to order. Hold on, but he's like, "Oh, sir, don't you worry about it." I'm like, "I gotta talk to this guy." <laughs> Rolled up to the window, and he pokes his head out. "Hey, sir," and I'm like, "What are you? Are you, are you here? Like, you know, I'm sure you're doing something else." He's like, "Oh, I'm going to school for such and such." I'm like, here's my car. You need to call me. Let's have a conversation. And this kid turned out to be one of my best bench techs, yeah. and then grew through the company. So you just don't know what you're gonna find out there. Expand your search for talent, because if you yeah. can find someone who, first of all, you give them a shot, they'll go through a wall for you for the rest of your career, right. for the rest of their career. Right. Um, the team logic that I told you guys about, 90% of the people in the building were interns at one time. Think about that. And now, one of them is the VP of sales, one of them is runs the service manager, and two of them run the whole entire <laughs> tech side of the business, cybersecurity and otherwise. And the two, the two that run that came from Circuit City back in the day. So I would just take interns in and line them up and they just became rock stars. Now not all of them did, and I made it clear to them. I'm gonna teach you this stuff. You don't have to do it with me, I don't care what you do. One guy was a pizza maker, he was 35 years old, and he said, I wanna try tech. I'm like, cool. Yeah. I brought him in, I showed him the business, and then he went to a bank. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. He's gonna tell everybody about the experience he had with us, and maybe yeah. he tells the bank how good we yeah. are, right? So one thing you can do too is go like speak at a college if they oh, have like an entrepreneurial program or a sales training program, they'll let you present as a as a uh, entrepreneur, yep. and those kids are going to start calling you when they're ready to graduate. They, they you get all their cards, and I send a thank you card to every one of the kids in that class, 
And this one girl that was the sharpest one in there, she called me and she was an intern for us. She said it was because I, other people had spoken to them. She said it was because I had sent her a thank you card. Yep. And yeah, that's why she came. Yeah, thank you cards with the caricature on them and stuff. And just make it personal and yeah. handwriting. Oh, yeah, it was handwritten. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's awesome. That's really good. So we'll be over in the corner here. We don't have a tablecloth, you know. There's here. <laughs> hanging out. It's a peer group. We're hanging out I don't think guys. you need one. But seriously. And by the way, I, I guess me, I, me and the guy from Finn are the only two guys that got the memo that it was a uh, you know, casual, casual, casual day. Casual day. <laughs> so, you know. Um, no, my iron and I got a fight this morning, so that's really why we're <laughs> Uh, well, the hotel iron exploded this morning, but anyway, whole separate story. If you guys want to talk, come over and have a conversation. Jill can definitely talk about demos and things like that, and you can at least check it out and see what it's like before you want to check it out, that stuff out. And separate from that, I mean when I say I'm a community guy to the core. The only reason I'm even on the vendor side is because I wanted to help MSPs do some of the things that I got to do back then, and that's from the heart. So if you guys need help, let me know. You can come here or find me on LinkedIn. Reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to give you a hand and help you out with whatever it is you're at looking for. Thanks very much. Thank you.